Hi. Um, I was going to rush through my lattice. I remember I, I was telling you that uh, the next time you see me, we're going to be through with the lattice. Well, <clears throat> I thought about that and I was thinking, I am going to be going into a Nahin weaving area um, and that there aren't that many Nahin weavers. We've got lots of Raven's Tail weavers um, and that's wonderful, but not that many people compared to the Raven's Tail weavers have really um, gone into the Nahin and, um, and it's uh, art that we definitely want to keep alive. So I was thinking that with these um, videos that I've been broadcasting that um, I'll give you a heads up today about uh, preparing some material so that you can go along with each stage as I form these shields these uh, copper shields that I have and um, and I'm the reason why I want to be generous like that as far as um, opening up um, teaching to as many people as I can through this vehicle that um, I just uh, feel like I don't know when the next workshop will be I don't know when I'll enter a classroom or even if I'll do a presentation or um, a lecture or anything. So about the art of Nahim, of the Chilkat, and that I really, I, I, of course, we still want people to um, be introduced to it and to try their hand at it and hopefully fall in love with it and, and continue doing this uh, beautiful, amazing, uh, art. So here's my proposal. Right now, before I go into it, before I'm going to do the the um, border of shields or the design uh, area of shields after this lattice. So before I start that, I want you to be prepared to, if you want, to go along with me as I talk about making these shapes, because um, there's so many basic Nahin techniques that I'll be going through in on this robe that is uh, a raven's tail robe. So if you've got warp laying around, whether it's raven's tail warp, which is what I'm using in my raven's tail robe, uh, or if you have, if you're lucky enough to have Nahin warp laying around, <clears throat> And you, but if you don't, I want to give you time to thigh spin your warp. So what I'll be doing is uh, wanting you to uh, spin 10 EPI, ends per inch, size warp. And you'll need um, 60, uh, 60 warps because <clears throat> I, I've calculated that uh, you'll need 22, 16, 22 uh, for what's happening here. Six inches, you're going to hang six inches of 10 ends, uh, 10 ends per inch per, per inch for six inches. And that you um, would have the length at least 12 inches. So, um, 60, uh, 60 warps wide, uh, which will be six inches at 10 ends per inch warp size and at least 12 inches long. Um, if you have enough to make it 14 inches long, that's fine too. We won't weave that deep, but I, I don't like our hands to be cramped. So, and the thing that this will be is it will be nothing. It will just be a um, sample to learn. So, um, so we're not going to have uh, um, borders. It will be uh, black 
with the shield in the middle. And um, if you have a lace weight and a, um, a fingering weight with all of your colors, with the different colors, that would be perfect. Um, okay, so, uh, I, so I didn't rush beyond the lattice. And so what I'm gonna do is um, continue weaving the lattice right now and uh, talking about um, the uh, shield design and I want also to bring in uh, some photos in this video of um, a cape that I did that was recently purchased by and collected by the uh, New Burke Museum. And it's now on display there, but I don't know when you're going to be able to walk in there again and see it. But anyway, it was recently collected by them. It was for almost 10 years. It was my personal cape. I loved um, any time I was making a presentation or uh, going to a special feast. Uh, I'd love to have that cape on. And it has a story. So um, as I weave today, I'll, I'll tell that story. Okay, so um, the cape that I'm talking about is, like I said, in the Burke Museum and in their uh, inaugural uh, exhibit, and I was uh, fortunate enough to be chosen as one of the uh, co-curators for that new uh, Northwest Coast Gallery in the new Burke uh, Museum. So um, it has, uh, in the back, it has a row of tinna underneath um, a canoe. So I always like to uh, challenge myself. So I challenged myself to draw the canoe because I always, I always kind of poo-pooed uh, the turn of the century uh, Chilkat robes that I saw that were more figurative than the um, classic designing robes. Um, at the turn of the century, you know, after all of our deaths and the epidemics that uh, swept through our coast and uh, was so devastating to our population. Um, a lot of our knowledge um, got um, left us through those deaths. So <clears throat> the uh, designing of the classic um, Naheen robe changed. Um, instead of the uh, conventionalized form line patterns, that happened before, they started being more figurative in um, in what and how they were portraying their their designs, and um, and I was uh, kind of uh, not really appreciating uh, those those robes that had changed into more figurative uh, designing. <clears throat> until I, I met enough of them in museum drawers to know that they were beautifully woven. The, the uh, quality of weaving is just beautiful. But the figurative uh, designs were, didn't follow the uh, rules of the... Um, classic form line. And so that's why I had always thought that they were not that good or, or you know, I don't know. I just kind of put my nose up to it, which, which after being educated about how exquisitely woven they were, 
and then realizing that that pretty much was one of our weak, weak links when it came to Naheen weaving. The, there were enough weavers that survived those, uh, those uh, epidemics. But as far as the uh, knowledge of designing for the weavers, that I think took a hit. And uh, that was one of our weak, weak links. Uh, so the designers changed, but the weavers continued to have their uh, traditional techniques. <clears throat> so I personally wanted to challenge myself. I challenged myself into uh, creating that, uh, that canoe shape. because I wanted to draw with yarn and see, you know, what, um, what that was like. So I drew, I, I pencil drew a shape and, um, and I planned it out and I created the, the canoe with, uh, with Naheen techniques. And it isn't easy. Those uh, figurative robes that were exquisitely woven, uh, creating the um, more figurative, it's not easy. It's to have uh, the conventionalized form line fit so perfectly and so genius. Um, those are e not easy, but they're they're very logical and um, and because of their compressed um, designs with the techniques it's just easier you know it took, it's hard to describe until you actually do it and so that's why I did it that's why I wanted to uh, put that challenge in front of me to do that canoe to draw it in yarn and I learned it wasn't easy so then my uh, respect for those turn of the century northern Plinket weavers uh, increased I, I uh, will never again <laughs> say that they were uh, not as good as the old ones uh, those weavers were excellent weavers. And the male designers were giving them more of a, uh, of a task and a challenge uh, than the ancient ones had. So, <clears throat> and they, ra they rise to that occasion and those robes are, are just beautifully woven. So um, then I wanted to put uh, a line of the um, the, the coppers uh, down below that uh, that canoe and the reason why I wanted to do that was because of um, a story I read in a book by uh, by that first minister that came to um, Masset. <clears throat> okay, so I'm reading from uh, the book In the Wake of the War Canoe. A stirring record of 40 years successful labor, peril, and adventure amongst the savage Indian tribes of the Pacific Coast and the practical headhunting, or the Pirat piratical headhunting Ida's of the Queen Charlotte Islands uh, by the venerable W.H. Collison, Archde Archdeacon of Metlakatla, with an introduction by the Lord Bishop of Derry. So um, this is his account. And um, I wouldn't be deterred by him calling uh, us piratical um, because actually 
they came to live with us and um, loved us and his son uh, came back to be a, a minister for us. So his son grew up here with us and wanted to come back. So I don't know uh, if the title, I don't, probably the Collisons weren't, didn't go for that title or make up that title of the book. But anyway, it's in chapter eight that we'll see um, what I was telling you about the story of when Eden, uh, this is when Edenshaw comes to Masset and is greeted by Chief Wea. The day following Edenshaw, an influential chief arrived from Virago Sound. So he, at that time, was chief in Dodden's. Oh, not Dodden's, I mean, uh, Cust not Custa, um, Kung. Kung is the village that is in Virago Sound. So Edenshaw before that was in Custa. And before that, when he was a child, he grew up with his uncle um, more in the uh, Rose, um, the um, Rose Point out uh, beyond Tow Hill. Anyway, so he's an influential chief, arrived from Virago Sound, accompanied by a large number of his tribe in several war canoes. His own canoe was manned principally by his slaves. He and his men were received with honors and a dance of peace was accorded them. There had been a quarrel between the two tribes, and Edenshaw, with his leading men, had been invited for the purpose of making peace. As their large canoes approached the shore, the occupants chanted the brave deeds of the past and were answered in a similar strain by the concourse on the shore. The chanting was accompanied by regular and graceful motions of the head and body and waving of the hands. The time was kept by a large drum formed like a chest and made of red cedar wood painted with grotesque figures and covered with skin. This was beaten by a drummer seated in the bow of the leading canoe. Naked slaves with their bodies blackened each bearing a large copper shield, now rushed into the water and cast the shields into the deep in front of the canoes of the visitors. As these shields are made of native copper and inscribed with their crestal signs, they are very highly valued amongst the Indians. Consequently, this was one of the highest marks of welcome and honor. Not that the copper shields were lost, to the owners as they were recovered afterwards on the ebb of the tide. <clears throat> so I, there's more to the story. That evening, Edenshaw goes into Chief Wea's big house and uh, Chief Wea dances a dance for Chief Wea. I mean, Wea dances as a host, dances a dance, scatters feathers, and then Edenshaw dances a dance to honor Chief Wea. And so um, this is a peace making visit. So um, I'm sure there were a lot of um, rituals, chants, dances uh, for a peace making uh, visit. So um, that, uh, that inspired me to draw out the canoe as well as the um, tina, the copper shields under that uh, cape, on that cape. So, um, so this is the second garment that I'm producing that has that copper shield pattern. And I'm gonna share that with you as to how to uh, form the shields and, uh, but you have to be ready. So I'm gonna continue weaving and I'll um, start this design pattern first, like I did above here, first with a rigid web blue band of, I think I have four or five rows of that. And then I'll go right into, um, into the uh, shields. And like I said, um, 
this is uh, your sample is not going to be anything really. I'm not intending to make a pouch, help, helping you create a pouch or, or anything. I want to help you learn the basic techniques of Naheem. So you're going to have, um, like I said, um, the six inches of, um, of uh, six inches wide and 12 or 14 inches uh, long, you'll have the warp. And um, I imagine it would just be the um, people who already know a bit about, uh, who already are raven's tail weavers and also um, people who, who have a little bit of knowledge of the Naheem. And I will hopefully help you go further along in your knowledge. Um, but be ready. So uh, start spinning or looking around for warp that can um, be part of this project. So I'll give you enough time. I also want to invite you to invite your friends. Like not everybody, I've been brought, I've been posting on YouTube and then posting it onto my Facebook and posting it onto my blogger site. Um, so I want you to invite your friends to go to YouTube and subscribe to my, um, my channel uh, so that they could get a uh, notice when I uh, publish it through YouTube because um, like I was saying, you know, we're, we're in kind of a dangerous situation. So I don't accept everybody as a friend on my Facebook page. So, but everybody in the public is, is uh, welcome to see uh, my work uh, and my daily broadcast through YouTube. I, it's it's all brand new to me, but I just really want to share um, this art with with you. So um, so get to spinning, and um, and tell enough people to um, that you think would be in, in interested. Um, I'm hoping that we have a, a crowd that can. Uh, start learning or continue learning more about the um, prestigious and very powerful and important uh, robe um, techniques. So thank you very much for, for joining us. And I hope that uh, you will feel inspired or you would like to um, join in more of a, um, a classroom or a, a where, I'm, where I'm really um, trying to teach these techniques. Thank you. Bye.